And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Ciro Diaz uh, from Autonomous University of Sinaloa, Mexico. We have seen uh, Ciro already when he delivered uh, opening remarks. Now he will walk us through 15 years of using uh, photo mode at his university. Once again, hello. I'll try to speak slowly, make pauses so that our interpreters could keep the pace. You know, Cuban and Mexican folks, we have uh, an ill reputation for speaking too fast. So I come from uh, the University of Sinaloa. It's a great pleasure to be here. At the Sinaloa Autonomous University, we have been using uh, Rockers a made photomod product for over 15 years. First thing that strikes you when you use Photomod is that uh, it enables you to teach teachers or train the trainers. If you have good specialists, they provide us with strong academic foundation. Unlike uh, the university in Argentina, in uh, our universities, mapping department, photogrammetry takes three semesters to complete. Analytical photogrammetry one semester, mapping one semester, and aerial photography one more semester. In a modern world, it's important uh, to have uh, the possibility uh, to have end-to-end uh, -end, uh, uh, processing applications. It's important for students to produce an image. And the same student needs to be able to generate the final product, to, to make an image and uh, to produce a mapping product, a map, basically. So that would allow our students to uh, secure employment much faster in the respective area of uh, competence. As I mentioned, since about 1984, uh, the photogrammetry department was set up. But uh, our university is over 100 years old, and one of the first specialties was the surveyor uh, specialty. So, so this is one of the key professions at the department where they teach architecture. Starting in 1997, At the post-graduation uh, course, we started to see a need to enter into digital world. So since then, uh, we started working with ortho photo plants. That's how they were called in those days. And, uh, 
The first version that uh, we purchased was uh, Photomod 2.3. Uh, so this is how the history of photogrammetry starts at our department. We realized that uh, by using images uh, collected uh, by uncalibrated uh, amateur cameras, we could address the problem of uh, image processing that will be cost-effective, quick, and uh, accurate academically. So this opportunity played a vital role. So these are our products products that we bought from rockers in the past, starting with ortho photo plans. This is a 2.5 uh, photo mod, which uh, we purchased in 2002. And from the onset, students could use it to do various tasks. 5.3 photomod version is what we purchased, and our students have access to it uh, since last year. Now, what did we do with these uh, packages? What experience uh, do we have uh, in terms of addressing various tasks that present themselves to students? What do we do with this software? In what tasks do we perform in real situations? First thing that we did was to use archive images. Very often, we requested scanned images, images that were processed and scanned by other institutions. So these were archival images uh, printed on the negatives or positives, and then we digitized them. We created or ortho photo uh, pairs and we uh, interpreted them as for example we can see campus of one of the universities where we tested this uh, system for the first time so we created five to six uh, images uh, interpreted it and uh, georeferenced it in 2002, our mapping capabilities uh, were quite poor. Subsequently, we start to use different uh, processing uh, methods, implying different scales. Uh, for a city of 250,000 people and 15 hectares of land, so we collect data for that city and uh, uh, we processed about 7,000 hectares. And we did uh, mapping processes. Then uh, we extracted archival images uh, made by an analog camera. These are mostly central parts of the state, like, for example, this image shows. Uh, this is Constantia environs. And uh, based on the pictures uh, from the Institute of Geography and Statistics, we created a map in trying to resolve a problem of uh, water drainage. 
So a thesis and several diploma papers uh, were written based on this exercise. In the beginning, it was very challenging for us to receive the necessary material to be processed. The Institute of Geography gave us raw imaging. It was difficult to obtain them and to process them. So there were a lot of difficulties for our students. Here you can see several maps of towns or villages around our city. And we used a regular camera um, with uh, a specialized parameters. The main idea was to obtain and collect data for further processing. So we started to look for our own tools to uh, get those images. So we started to calibrate and we wanted to calibrate uh, a few cameras at a test lab. Now we do those tests ourselves, in-house. This is the first camera, now we use Sony, now we have Hasselblad uh, with 39 megapixel resolution. Um, when we receive the tools to make images, once we receive the tools to make images and uh, we learned how to do it, we have the tools, we have the software, now we needed an aircraft, a plane to make flights. So, the way we dealt with this issue is that uh, we managed to obtain those uh, planes. This is the facade of our university's uh, department, which we collected, which we acquired uh, from an airplane. Then we did the interpretation. Uh, this is a historic monument, an aller, uh, allegory for sugar, because we're a, a big uh, sugar producing uh, town, and that sugar is uh, exported to Europe. So these are the images that uh, we interpreted, and then at the end of the interpretation task, we applied for photogrammetry to create a facade of one of the buildings, a Rosalina house, one of the oldest, most ancient houses. Uh, we acquired 16 images to uh, have uh, good um, quality um, interpretation, and this is how it panned out. Why do we have so many? images. Why do we need so many images to uh, create a photograph, an image of the facade? There's an eight meter span eight, which we covered and in front of the building there were a lot of trees with thick foliage so it was hard to uh, distance ourselves from the site. So we had to make uh, large uh, images and then uh, uh, stitch them together to collect the necessary info. What happened later was we set more of more global plans and we ran an experiment wherein we uh, used the plane. We mounted cameras on a plane ranging in resolution from 2 to 10 and 15 megapixels on ultra light weight uh, planes. First we used the REM S uh, RSN 12 
then we used uh, Cessna 150, 155. All of that was leased, of course, to us because um, flying your own planes is uh, very costly. We also leased uh, or rented to one farming plane. 380,000 pesos is the cost of one flight. So during that flight, uh, we acquired several images of the work zone and images for other kinds of work. We never, f our main task was for students to get a taste of this uh, tool, of this uh, software, you know, learning by doing. And uh, later we wanted to buy a plane of our own uh, from the Czech Republic, Aerotrack A240. We have all necessary papers for that aircraft. Uh, we have a professional pilot, and we use it uh, for regular student trainings. And that uh, plane is equipped with 40 me megapixel camera. Also attached to it are wings, uh, power supply with five hour capability and we use uh, premium gasoline. The height of a flight is about three to four kilometers. It's just that uh, we need to use on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, a different type of work. We must remain, we must stay within the range so that it is not so far away uh, from uh, home airfield. This plane, um, is used for a full uh, technological project. We do data acquisition in flight. Uh, we can do georeferencing. We can uh, then uh, uh, import this data into computers to create orthophoto plants and uh, 3D models of terrains and to receive final mapping products. This is an example of one of the projects that uh, we performed in 2009 of the town of Mochis, 15,000 hectares, 360 um, surveys with uh, 10 megapixel cameras. So. That's a pretty big project. Then we used Photomod for processing, and this is an aerial triangulation that uh, we generated with checkpoints. And these are the measurement results in front of you. Before doing a survey, uh, we do preliminary calculations on 600 meter height. So we flew at 600 meter high. When we uh, when we do th 300 uh, strips, then um, we obtain the desired results. 30 meter resolution in plan, vertical resolution. 
then we created a map of 1 to 500, 1 to 1,000 scale. And uh, uh, what about schools? What about our faculty? Where is it located? So for each uh, specific task, there are for each specific training, the right zone associated tasks. We did some experimenting with the selection of cameras uh, to build and uh, monitor our territories. This is an ortho photo plan of the entire town. Uh, in mosaic, the resultant one. Then uh, we uh, created this map with all the contour lines uh, fully and properly depicted. Another thing we did with uh, photo mode are three landmarks of the town. First is the ortho photo plan. The first photo plan was uh, made in 1999 in Mexico with 1 to 70,000 scale. This is the year 1994. It was interpreted and ortho photo plan was uh, created. In 2003, uh, we did a satellite data acquisition. And in 2009, on your right, is the result of our uh, aerial photography exercise. So consequentially, consecutively, the results of our work can be presented here in front of you. And uh, we can see comparative results of this urban sprawl, uh, urban resources. This can serve well. Uh, for the benefit of the municipal authorities to create a geographic GIS uh, systems. Well, I'm being uh, pushed here to uh, finish my presentation. So this is my last slide. Let's try to get it over and done with quickly. There is one more application I can think of. For example, this is where we did one flight. Uh, to survey the town of Kuyakana, 12 kilometer strip. On uh, your left side is our uh, strip or our route. And this is another ortho photo plan. Created by our students of the area with populated areas along the shoreline. It's called COPA. It's a future tourist project where all land surveyors who will be engaged in this project had to overcome certain difficulties to obtain images they needed in mountains. In fact, these are typical characteristics of this area. Another type of work in the coastline, it's a Cape Atlant. We use the same camera. Uh, we got ortho photo plan with good accuracy. Another coastline shot. This is how we process data. Our university takes part in a federal government work, we identify boundaries 
of uh, mining areas, for example, approximately uh, 220, 250 meters is the altitude for the survey. So we did an aerial coverage of this uh, territory. Uh, located five meters higher than the canopy. Then we did photogrammetric uh, processing to uh, generate orthophoto plants. Then we conducted bathymetric survey. And uh, got a new project. This is uh, a digital elevation model that uh, was done using PhotoMod. So this is the final map we received. And also we used uh, drones or UAVs for our project. And yes, we uh, used it in the 2.4 version. Uh, nevertheless, the software provides us with this chance of uh, obtaining good quality modern products. So this is uh, how we process and receive data based on aerial photography. Our work is coordinated by the mapping centers. I have here with me one of the students who is working on his uh, thesis, dissertation, on uh, the Manglar exploration in the north of the country, where they forecast hurricanes or other natural disasters. Uh, we can receive and experiment uh, for example, we can work on power lines, communication lines, roads, and our graduates will be pioneers in uh, creating a high level products. So we will promote promote your product as much as we can so that it is purchased in my country as much as possible. I believe that the usage of this software uh, contributes to distribution of mapping products across the country. We are living in a time when more attention needs to be paid to academic knowledge, to research centers, and um, we must experiment with all new technology and use all means available to us. Of course, we are privileged because we have our own plane to operate. We have our own software. And thank you for your attention. I really did. I really felt uncomfortable with having uh, to keep uh, prompting uh, the speaker uh, because what he told us is uh, that there is a lot of practical value in using photomod. Unfortunately, we are slightly behind, so all we have is three minutes for questions and answers. 
I'm from Estonia, Natalia. I have a question. I am also a teacher of photogrammetry, and uh, we also try to do projects. But listening to your presentation, I keep asking myself, you know, you bought a plane, you fly a lot. I know that it is very expensive. So who finances these activities? The cost of a plane, in our case, in our particular case, was not that much. It was a cheap plane, about 1.3 million uh, uh, pesos, or so $70,000. And it was not purchased by the university funds. It was a private project that sponsored the uh, purchase of uh, this airplane. So the Secretariat approved uh, the purchase and we got it. So it is one time investment. We invested one big bulk once and then uh, you don't go into mo too much cost. Then what are the costs can you expect? Like 200 <coughs> kilometers of flight would cost you a, uh, 16 liters of gasoline. And within our institute, our university is helping us, of course. But uh, we're also looking who we can rent it out to so that we could get additional resources. Well, in our case, it's much more difficult to work. I don't want to take too much of your time because it's time to break for lunch. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was very interesting. Then, dear colleagues, as long as we are quite uh, delayed for lunch, I suggest that all the remaining questions will be asked later on during the breaks. Thank you very much.